Hey guys, Mark with Think Insurance, and today we're gonna talk about how much does an insurance agent make per policy? Before we get started, I gotta grab a quick cup of coffee. By the way, I appreciate those of you that have been donating cups of coffee to me. It keeps this channel running. There is a link below if you are interested, if you get great value and you wanna send a tip my way, it's there, I appreciate it either way. I hope you guys get great value out of this. So I've been in the industry for over a decade. I think I'm going on almost 11-ish, 12-ish years. I don't know, it's been forever. And I've made several different commissions on different policies. I worked for a call center at one point and I actually made some of the most money there when the volume was there. They were paying gobs of money to get phone calls coming in. They didn't really care so much about the coverages. They were more interested in just getting people on the books. And so it was a place where we would get paid per policy. And there was no premium. It was just, you sold a policy, you get a dollar. Now that dollar was the starting point. Once you sold 20 policies, you got $3. And once you sold 30 policies, you got $5. And once you sold 80 policies, you were up to $12, $13 per policy. And that was retroactive to the first policy. Eventually it maxed out close to $40 per policy, which was crazy. Now at that time you were selling a lot of insurance. You were working overtime just to get to that level. That's a lot of policies. My best month that I've ever sold as far as policy goes is 221 policies in 30 days. It was nuts. I made a lot of money that month. <laughs> I paid off my van. Thank you to whoever bought a policy from me. Hopefully you didn't have to use the insurance, but if you did, it was there for you. Now that method is fairly decent because it gives you an income. The nice part about that position is I could walk away at the end of the day and whatever I sold, I sold and I didn't have to stress about it. I wasn't worried about who's calling me next. I wasn't worried about what's going on to a point. It was just get on the phone, make as many calls as I could, try to sell as quickly as I could to get them on the books. The downfall to that is there was no incentive to continue. Every month I was a new rep. Every month we were all at ground zero and we started over. And they would adjust the actual policy count based on what they saw for advertising versus what they sold the month before. So if you did really good the month before, they would slow down the month after just to make the budget work. Most of us understood that, so we would take some time off or, or breaks and go slower that next month just because we knew the incentives just weren't there yet. Now the most common way is if you're an agent. Now this is if you're an agent, not working for an agent. If you're the agency owner, agent, whatever you wanna call it, you get paid a premium based on the contract that you have with a company. Most companies give about a 10 to 15% connection or commission on all of the premium that you sell. This doesn't include any type of fees. So if you're in a state where you're paying like a service fee or an MCCA fee is the state that I'm in, and that's usually like 100 to $120 per car, that doesn't count. That's part of the state's fee. It's just the incentive that you get without those additional taxes or fees or anything that's included in that. So you would sell a policy, let's just say on average $2,000. And if you got a 12% commission, then you would make $2,400. Keep in mind, if you're the agency owner or the agent, you probably have some charges where you had to advertise to that customer or you had to turn on the lights, hire a person to service them or do all of that piece. So at the end of that portion of it, sure, you took in $2,400, but you probably passed out about 2,000 of that upfront to get the customer. Where the real money comes into play is when you're long-term in the policy where they've been with you for five years or more, because normally you're gonna get about a 10 to 12% renewal every single year that that person's with you. You pay all the money up front to get them in the door, make a little bit of incentive on the front end to pay your bills. And then as they continually like your services and stay with you, you're gonna constantly get those renewals over and over and over. So the last way that I know of that you can make commissions on insurance is being an agent under an agent, so to speak. So you're working for an agent owner. You're essentially doing the work as an agent and you're kind of preparing and learning to become your own or they've just paid you a salary. And that's pretty cut and dry. You get usually a 30 to $50,000 salary depending on how well you do. Some of them mix it up. So some agent owners will give you a $20,000 salary and then they'll give you commissions beyond that where you get 25% of their commission or half of their initial commission. Because keep in mind, their goal is to get that person, that customer to stay for those five years. If they have to give you all the commissions, if they have to, 
Granted, they won't because they still got to pay the light bill and all of that. But if they have to pay, you know, 30, 40% of that commission to you, then they're more willing to do that. They're gonna get the lead. They're gonna make sure that the leads are in front of you. You get the calls, you do the work, you get a portion of the commission. So you're gonna make about 30, 40, sometimes $50,000 per year doing that type of work. Now that's in the environment that you're only the salesperson. If you're in the environment where you're sales and service, that's a completely different world. I'm gonna be honest with you, I only have experience through friends that are doing it and they love working for the companies, but they don't love the pay. Sure, they're getting a 30 to $35,000 salary and they'll get a couple hundred dollars in commissions, but they don't own the book as much and they're servicing just as much as they're selling. So it's very important to do the legwork to get the customer, but it's also important to take care of them. Most companies understand that specialized people that are great at service, handling the service side, it makes way more sense than having a sales agent do both because now you're kind of drowning yourself with follow-ups and getting documents out and doing all of that. It's great for a stable company that doesn't wanna grow faster. And so there may be incentives and reasons you wanna work for that option as well. So to go back and answer that question, the per policy, let's just be as direct as possible. You're gonna make 10% to 15% as an agent. You're gonna get about 30 to 40% of that amount if you're not the owner, you're just working for the agent as an agent. And then you're gonna make a salary with a little bit of commissions per policy if you're just doing the service and sales. So we'll say you're probably gonna get your salary which is 30 to 35,000 a year, and then you're gonna make maybe 10% of the commission on that policy. I hope this was helpful, guys. I'm very curious to know what your guys' thoughts are. Are you currently working for an agent? If you are, let us know in the comments below. You don't have to disclose the company or state that you're in, but let us know what commission structure you've been on and whether you've liked it. If it's a past company, that's fine as well, but I'd love to see what options are out there and what other different pieces that people have seen in the market. I'm Mark with Think Insurance. I'll see you in the next one.